Let's now get more details on the just concluded climate change conference. We're joined in studio live by Dr. Richard Munang, the African Regional Climate Code Change Coordinator at the United Nations Environmental Program. Welcome to Africa Live. Let's first get your thoughts on the uh, just concluded talks and what is in it exactly for Africa? Uh, thank you very much uh, for having me in studio. I think that Africa have got a lot um, with the uh, discussions and with the just concluded conference of parties, DIP COP19. Africa went into this conference um, urging that the world should be able to uh, replenish the global uh, climate fund called the Green Fund to ensure that the amount of money which was um, pledged should be uh, replenished to ensure this fund can provide the money which is needed to address climate change in developing countries, especially Africa. And one of the issues was also to look at how the world could come up with um, a mechanism to address onset events like drought, like floods, uh, as a result of uh, the changing climate. And another was also to look at how the world could agree to reduce emissions by two degrees, which as the International uh, Intergovernmental Panel for Climate Change has indicated, if the world reach two degrees, the impacts will be catastrophic for the African continent. So these were the issues on the table. And the uh, just concluded COP19 um, move a step forward towards uh, discussing and putting in place a framework to discuss the uh, legal agreement that will be fostered in 2015 in Paris. So there is progress made, albeit small steps, but we moving, the world is moving towards that agreement. Agreements have been uh, made, you know, progress has been made, as, as you mentioned there, though, but what exactly has been achieved since the last meeting? Or, uh, you know, when you talk about funds have been, having been set aside for uh, Africa there, what exactly has been achieved since the last meeting, or is it just pledges and empty talk? I think there has been progress made. Um, if you look in uh, Cancun, where the, there was COP16 um, after Copenhagen, the Green Climate Fund was set up and also there was a decision that the national adaptation plan for countries whereby countries can be able to integrate uh, climate change into decision making frameworks and development processes. That process is currently ongoing and countries are already engaged in that. There's also the adaptation fund which is a fund that was put in place to help fund adaptation in developing countries. In Waso, there was uh, a decision where there were also pledges up to about 100 million put in place to ensure that adaptation can be addressed. Not everything is addressed equally, but at the same time, there is progress that is being made, and as indicated, albeit small steps, there is um, potentially going to be uh, a kind of a culmination towards an agreement in Lima in 2014, Peru, where the world will come together again, COP20, uh, discuss the All elements right. that were discussed in Warsaw, so that as they move towards Paris in 2015, all the elements that have been discussed and will be discussed in Lima could be put together in a way that the world can uh, actually come to uh, a legal binding agreement and help limit emissions. How, how will that adaptation plan, though, assist Africa in getting out of harm's way in the short term? Well, um, right up to the, uh, the COP, COP19 in Warsaw, uh, the United Nations Environment Program produced a report called the Africa Adaptation Gap Report. And what this entailed was actually to show exactly the impacts that are currently existing in the continent as a result of the changing climate and also the projected impacts. And this report clearly shows that the changing climate change is already having impacts in the continent and is projected to have huge impacts. For example, sea level rise in the African continent right. is going to be 10% higher than the global mean, disrupting a lot of coastal cities and in a continent where you have about 26,000 kilometers of coastline right. with almost about 32 countries with their coast with most of the cities on the coastal line. This is quite going to be a very, very serious issue. For example, um, Dar es Salaam is going to suffer assets, lot, loss assets up to about 10 billion and even Mombasa in Kenya is going right. to suffer asset loss up to about 15 billion in 2050. So putting together uh, adaptation actions which could be able to reduce this vulnerability to climate change is imperative and the United Nations Environment Program is pursuing a program in collaboration with other partners All called right. ecosystem-based adaptation using our ecosystems, our forests, our rivers, our seas and the services they provide to ensure that they can be able to address the changing climate. There is an example like in Mozambique whereby restoration of mangroves help address some of the climate challenges and even in Togo 
using small dam rehabilitation through ecological based approaches right. have provided water to the communities in this uh, country. All right, Dr. Richard Munang, Africa Regional Climate Change Coordinator, UNEP. We're going to leave it there for the moment, but thank you for joining us here on uh, Africa Live.